Today on Back of the Pack, we're making classic pecan pie from Carol Syrup's website. As the final judge on whether or not that fits into the spirit of the channel, I'll go ahead and allow it. For the crust, whisk together one and a quarter cups or 155 grams of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons granulated sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Next, we need a half a cup or 110 grams of unsalted butter. We're gonna do that thing all the cool kids are doing and grate it instead of cutting it into cubes. Your butter should be nice and cold straight out of the fridge or freezer. Add the cold butter to the flour mixture with your hands. Pour in a quarter cup of ice water, just fish out the cubes, then toss with a fork. It should become thick and damp, but crumbly, whatever that means. I think they're trying to say well hydrated and starting to clump together. If it's still too dry, add a tablespoon of water at a time until it starts to form into this shaggy dough. Pour it out onto a lightly floured surface and work it into a smooth ball. Instead of doing that, I like to make a little tower with some crenellations. Or maybe this is a little monster with a happy smile. Aww. Flatten it into a disc to make it easier to roll out later. Cover with plastic wrap and throw it in the fridge for at least half an hour. Take it out of the fridge and let it sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes, then roll it out. For a 9 inch pan, we're going to roll it out to about 12 inches. This way we have a little bit of overhang on the edge. When you put it in your pie pan, make sure that you're dropping it in gently and not stretching it out. When you're doing the edge of the crust, you want about a half inch of overhang to tuck underneath. Just trim it so that it's half an inch from the edge of the pan. Then you just fold it like this all the way around. You can either press it down with a fork like this, or you can do a little ruffled edge by holding your thumb and forefinger like you're measuring an inch and pushing in from the opposite side of the crust. Then just line your fingers up again and continue all the way around. Put that in the fridge to chill for a bit because now it's time to make the filling for our pecan pie. We're gonna go ahead and mix the first five ingredients. One cup Carol light corn syrup, two eggs, and sugar. Wait, that can't be right. Isn't this just liquid sugar? Wow, listen, I didn't promise this was gonna be healthy. So, add three quarters of a cup packed brown sugar. When a recipe says packed brown sugar, it means press it into the cup measure with the back of a spoon or your fingers so that when you pour it out, it holds its shape, like this. Next up, we'll need two tablespoons melted butter, two teaspoons vanilla extract. Mix those five ingredients together thoroughly with a wooden spoon. I don't like it when the pieces are too big in a pie like this because it makes it hard to cut without smashing it. So I'm just gonna give this a couple rough chops and call it good. You only need about three cups or 330 grams of those pecans. That's it. Pour it into the pie crust you've been slaving over and bake on the center rack of the oven for 60 to 70 minutes. Cool for two hours and then put your pie in the refrigerator for one to two hours to let it set. You guys know I'm not that patient. I let it sit at room temperature for about an hour and then I put it in the fridge for 20 minutes and got tired of waiting and decided to eat it then. This was really good. I'm not a fan of pecan pies because usually it's a little bit of pecan with a really thick, sugary, grainy mixture at the bottom. This gorgeous pie was like pecan brittle as a pie. The little bit of filling that settles underneath the pecans was smooth and the perfect complement to the crunchy top. Special thanks to Allie for commenting with this recipe and thank you for watching Back of the Pack. If you have a recipe from the back of the package or a product's website like Alley that you want me to try, please leave it in the comments.